Managing Director of EMEC, which is the European Marine Energy Centre. We're based in Stromness in Orkney and I'm a Chartered Civil Engineer and now Fellow of the Institution. And what we're doing up at EMEC is we're trying to find ways to, to harness the energy from waves and tides. Back in the 90s it was realised that there was energy to be ha harvested and had from, the, from the, the seas around the coast and so a test centre was thought of and was brought into existence in 2003 and 2004. By taking the energy out of the seas, both from the tides moving backwards and forwards or the motion of the waves up and down, we know there are, there, there are techniques and tools and particularly machines that will be, have to be designed to find a way to harvest this energy. The test centre itself comprises cables that run out into the sea into where there are strong resources, either strong tides or large waves, and providing the infrastructure that allows people who've got wave and tidal energy machines to test their machines by plugging them on the ends of our cables and the energy they generate flows through our cables and into the national grid and does real work. And so what's happening at the moment is we've got a number of developers up there on site generating and piloting these brand new machines and finding a way to really harvest energy from, from the oceans. It's really part of a, a, an international initiative really to find ways to harvest energy from, from the motions of the, the oceans of, of the planet. And this, is a, this is a big job frankly. We've never done anything like this before and we're seeing some real successes. So machines have come from 11 different countries to this test centre in Orkney, um, from about 30 different companies, and they've each been bringing their own individual ideas. And it's really fascinating seeing these people from all these different countries with their different approaches trying to tackle a very similar problem. Because we know we can't keep burning carbon, we've got to find a way to build a sustainable energy system. And so this is one of the ways of doing it. This is a, an opportunity for the UK to generate a, a significant amount of its power. Some estimates were done well, a few years ago now that reckoned that around 20% of the UK's electricity could be generated from wave and tidal energy. 20%. That's about the size of nuclear generation in the UK at the moment. And the point is it's entirely carbon free. So if we can tra crack this technology, we end up with a carbon free energy source. Not only that, we do live on the earth, but actually it's covered in water for most of it. So there's the opportunity to sell these products all around the world and, and generate wealth and frankly, support the economy. So we've had some real successes with marine energy particularly lately, and probably one of the biggest ones is a company called Scott Renewables, and they're a local company based in Stromness. They designed the machine there. It's the biggest tidal turbine in the world. It was built at Harland and Wolf, and has been installed up in Orkney with local vessels, so it didn't need massive, massive vessels to install it. Recently, they've been out at sea for nearly a year, and a few weeks ago, they produced 7% of Orkney's electricity. 7% of the electricity from one machine. And that's just unheard of. There's nowhere else in the world that's got that scale of generation going on for marine renewables. So we're really delighted about that. Civil engineering has always been about harnessing the forces of nature for the benefit of, of man. But we now realise it's man's not just the only organism on this planet. We have to find a way to, to work, frankly, with the rest of the system. The earth is a closed system. There is no sort of door next door, you can go into another room if this one goes wrong. We've got to get this one right. Civil engineering has gone through quite a transition and realised that yes it has solved so many problems for man, but now it has to solve problems for the planet as a whole if man is to survive on it. It's great to be in the middle of this as a, as a civil engineer, helping to make this happen. Without the skills that you, you develop as a civil engineer of project planning and logistics and environmental impact and all these other bits and pieces, without all those skills together, these technologies will never get deployed. Is there a better mission? 